What's up guys, this is Milos, welcome back to my channel as I take you on a journey to setting up your R in VS Code for data analysis and data visualization. VS Code, why should you install R there? Well, first of all, it uh, has powerful features such as, for example, code editing, debugging, version control and extensions. Second, you can use the R extension for VS Code, which provides extended syntax highlighting, code completion, linting, formatting, viewing data, data plots, etc. Third, within VS Code, you can also use GitHub Copilot, which is a new AI-based coding assistant, which is going to suggest lines of code for you as you write. And finally, you can also use VS Code with R to mix with other um, workflows, such as, for example, Python, Jupyter Notebook, etc. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover three steps. First, how you download and install R. Second, how do you download and install VS Code? And finally, how do you integrate R in VS Code and start coding? Our first step is to find out where to download R. So in your browser, type downloads R. And then you will get the option download R 4.3.1 for Windows. Click on that link which will take you to the page where you can download the latest R version for Windows. Here, you should click on the first link, which says Download R 4.3.1 for Windows. A new window will pop up asking you to save the installation file for R. So here, you should choose the folder where you want to download this file and then click Save in order to save it locally. Once you download the file, open it and initiate the installation of R. Select the language of your choice for this installation and then click OK. In the next window, you can find more information about the R as well as the license. You can read through this text, but let's be honest, no one does that. So the next thing is click on Next to continue installation. The new window will ask you where you want to install your R. So here you can choose the folder by clicking on Browse. And once you're ready, you can then click on Next to continue the installation. In the subsequent window, you will be asked what components you would like to install. And I would here simply just select everything because anyways, it's only going to take 170 megabytes of your disk space. Once you are selected what you want to install, simply click on Next and then continue the installation. Along the way, you'll be also asked if you want to customize the startup options, but here I will just go and accept defaults and then click Next. One additional step is whether you want to create a desktop shortcut. So if yes, you can just click on this first box. And then there are also registry entries for the number version number of this R. So you definitely want this one. And also you want all the files, with, which are R files, to be associated with R. So also keep this. After that, just click on Next to continue the installation. This will initiate the installation of R on your computer. Once it's done, simply click on Finish to finish the installation. Once you install R on your system, go back to the folder where you installed it. So for me, this is the folder where I installed. And you will see in the pathway to this folder that it's called r 4.3.1, which corresponds with the version that we downloaded and then we installed on the system. While you are here, go ahead and find the library folder, which should be the fifth folder from the top. Click twice on it to open it, and then navigate to the top of this window where you see the pathway to this folder. Copy this pathway, because in the next step, we will declare the library and the pathway to this R library as an environment variable in Windows, which is then going to help our system know where to find the pathway to the library if we want, for example, to install packages in R. One of the most important things once you install R on your system is to declare a path to the library where we will be installing all the packages in R. So to do that, you click here on the Start button and then click Next on the Settings. Once you click on the Settings, there will be a new window with a list of different options. Scroll down and find About tab. Click on that tab. And once you click, you will get to the page with your device specifications. 
There you will be offered three links just below the device specification list. You should click on Advanced System Settings. A new window called System Properties will pop up. And uh, over there at the bottom of this window, you will find an option called Environment Variables. You click there, and this is going to open the Environment Variables window. There are two types of uh, variables, user variables and system variables. You want to put the pathway to the R library to the system variables. So you're going to create a new one. You should click there on the new option, which is going to open a new window where you define, first of all, the variable name. Uh, so we're going to call this one R underscore lips underscore user. And then for the variable value, you should paste here that pathway to the R library. Once you're done, just click OK and click OK also in other windows. Now that we declare the pathway to the library where we will be installing packages, it's time to quickly just open R and install one of the libraries that will help us with this integration with VS Code. Now go back again to the folder where you installed R and search for the first folder, which is called bin. Click twice and open it. Now you will see again a list of uh, files and one folder among them, which is called x64. So this is where uh, the 64-bit version was installed. So click twice to open this one again. And then finally, in order to start the R, you need to go and search for RGUI file and then click twice to open this one. Now you will see a very old-fashioned R console, which of course you can use to install the libraries to work in it, but it's very clunky and that's why we are also installing VS Code so that you can easily type and work in R. But before we can do that, we are here for a very different reason. And that is, we want to install a library that will help us with the integration. And that library is called Language Server Setup. So now we will install this library in R. And the way to do that is simply say install dot packages. And then you put into the quotes the name of this library, which is language server setup. Language server setup and everything together. And you close with quotes and the brackets, and then you press enter. What you will see next is simply a list of servers from which you can install the package. So what I usually do, I go for the first one, which is simply the cloud. Our next step is to install the language server package and all of its dependencies into a separate independent library. So the way you do that is you just write language server setup and then double colon language server underscore install. And then you just press enter. Once you do that, you will get a prompt from Windows, which is going to tell you if you want to install this Redditor support language server into your own documents and in a separate library. So you just click here that you yes, you do agree. And then the next thing, uh, the downloading will start and the question will be, do you want to install from sources the package which needs compilation? You don't need to install from the sources, so you can just click no. This will initiate the installation of all the necessary packages which are going to be put into a separate library and once this is done we can go ahead and do the final step which is adding code to our profile to automatically align the library part to the language server functionality if the process is an instance of the language server otherwise the r session will just run as usual with library paths unaffected so we can achieve this but by typing the next code which is uh, exactly this. So we're going to call language server setup again, and then we'll simply run this function called language server add to our profile and click enter. And then the final question will be if you want to append the following code, uh, simply creating this new R profile. So yes, you should click here on yes, that you agree with this. All right, guys, we are ready for the next step and we are back in our browser search where we will search for the way to download a VS Code. So we're just going to type here, download VS Codes, and then we're going to type, uh, press Enter. And then you should be able to find a search uh, which is called Download Visual Studio Code Mac Linux Windows. So click on that one. And once you click, it will prompt you to select 
the type of the file that you want to download. So because we are here working in Windows, Windows 11 in specific, we just need to click on this button, which has Windows, Windows 10 and 11. This will prompt you to download the file. So you should choose here where you want to download the installation file and then click save, which is going to start the download. You should then navigate back to the folder where you downloaded the installation file. And over there, you should see this beautiful icon with the name VS Code User Setup. So click twice and open it to start the installation. The first window that will pop up is the license agreement window. Ideally, you should read this whole thing, but no one does that. So just go ahead, click on I accept the agreement and then click next. Next thing is you need to define where you want to install your Visual Studio code. So if you're not happy with the proposed path here, you can click on browse and here select the one that you want. So once you're happy, also click next, which will take you to another window where you need to or you don't need to select start menu folder. If you want this to be uh, created in your start menu folder under a certain name, you can also uh, select the name that you want to go with. I'm just going to go with this default option called Visual Studio Code. If you don't want to create, you can click on this box here, which says don't create a start menu folder. So once this is done, click on next. And then there are some additional things that you can do. One of them is, for example, you can create a desktop icon after installing. I'm not going to go for this one, but you can definitely do that. There are some other ones, but the two most important ones that you should keep checked is, first of all, register code as an editor for supported file types, which will also allow us to work with our files. And the second one is add to path which is basically adding to those environment variables to the system so that the path can be always recognized. So you should keep those two checked at least and then click on next, which will take you to the final window, which is about installing. So here you should click install, which is then going to prepare for the installation and is going to uh, extract the files and install on your Windows system. After that, you will get a final, final window, which is about launching the Visual Studio Code. So then you just simply need to click Finish. If you made it this far, then congratulations, because you've just installed VS Code and you're almost ready to use it to code in R. One last step, or one of the last steps, is to enable the extension, which is going to make your work in VS Code with R much easier. And uh, to install this extension, you need to uh, choose the fifth uh, icon from the top, which is called extensions. Uh, or you can just simply click, as it says here, Control plus Shift plus X. So I'm just going to click on this icon. And then over here, in order to work with R, you need to actually find uh, your proper extension. So the one that we need here, it's called uh, uh, Redditor Support. So it's the first one. So you just click here and then install it. And once you install it, you will uh, see here a very short description of you know, how to get started uh, and also what are the steps to enable R in VS Code. And we already covered step number one, which is install R, also install language server in R. And now three, we also installed R extension. VS Code can work and run R only if it knows where our executable file is located. So our next step is to uh, point VS Code to that. And to do that, we will need to actually run uh, R, but not in that old-fashioned R console, but here in VS Code. And to do that, you need to do the following. Go to the File tab here on top, click on it, and then click on New File in this list. This will open, open up a new list of different uh, file types, and you should click on R document. So this will open, uh, finally, an R file in which you can work. But in order to execute any commands, you need to open a terminal for R. So to do that, uh, you should click on the terminal uh, bar here, and then you should click on new terminal. So this is by definition going to open you a PowerShell, at least on my computer. But there is this uh, downward pointing arrow next to the PowerShell and that's plus. So click on this arrow and you will see here our terminal on the list. So click on that and this is going to open an R terminal for you. So this is where you'll be executing your commands. Now, in order for us to find the pathway to uh, our executable files, we need to write the following, r.home, and then open brackets, and over there, write bin. So bin is actually this folder 
uh, where we actually went to before where our executable file is located. So now in order to run this, you should select it just like I did. And then you have two options, either press control enter at the same time or alt enter at the same time. So I'm going to do press alt enter at the same time. And then in the terminal below, which I'm going to expand now so that you can see, I got here the pathway to the exec executable file. So I'm just going to copy this pathway within quotes. So, okay. So we need to click back on this R extension and then just pull down this terminal so that you can see what's going on. So here there is this uh, button which is called manage and you should uh, stand next to the uninstall button. So you should click on it. And then on the list of options, you should click on extension settings. So this is going to offer us a possibility to uh, enter the pathway to our executable file. So now here on this list that you can see it's called extensions. It has 63 elements. You can click on R. So it's going to actually point us only to those that are related to R. So now here, there are actually a bunch of options where you can uh, customize, you know, how things are going to look like and work in VS Code when you're working with R. So there are like, like many, many options here. But the one that we actually need, we need to define a pathway in Windows. Of course, there's also an option for, you know, Mac and Linux. Uh, but this is the one that we need. So it's called R Path Windows, Path to an R executable to launch R background processes in Windows. So that's that's the one that we need. So here uh, you should paste into this box the link to the executable um, file that you that you previously had. So just like this. And that's basically it. So once you're done with that, you can simply close the settings and uh, navigate back to this um, our file. So from here, we can now start coding and see how things go for us. So this is how you set up R in Visual Studio Code. And now I'm just going to show you what are some of the advantages of installing R in this environment or this IDE. So one of them is, for example, it can do autocomplete of the code for you. You just start writing and then it will find uh, you know, those uh, commands uh, that uh, exist in R. So for example, I'm going to start writing that I want to load SF package into R. So to do that, you use a function library. So I start writing and immediately you can see here it suggests to autocomplete. So if I click on this library, it's going to complete the whole thing for me. But of course, it doesn't know what I want to load. So I can simply here remove this SF or remove the package and put SF. Uh, and I can also remove the other stuff because I don't need and I can then execute by pressing alt enter at the same time, which is going to load SF. So that's one option. So it can uh, autocomplete things. Another option here is if I hover over this, you will see that it's going to offer me um, configuration preview. So if I click on this one, uh, it's going to open a new window, which is called help. And here it's going to provide me with the description of the SF package. So the good thing here is it's not just that it's going to offer me this. You can also access any of the functions from the SF package. So for example, let's write SF and then double colon. And then for example, let's do ST uh, geometry here. So if I do this and then I hover over this, again, I'm able to actually access help. So I click on this and then in the new window, I will get exactly what is this uh, ST geometry function in the SF package. How is it used? and even at the end, some of the examples. Pretty cool, right?